Welcome to Attican Plays Railway Empire. All right, hi, this is Attican, and welcome to another Railway Empire video. This is our playthrough of the Great Britain and Ireland DLC scenario. And I have to say, first of all, this is a do-over for me. I had had the game all played. I played through the scenario and uh, was ready to uh, uh, edit it and narrate it and get it out to you. And uh, I had some technical difficulties. So I'm, I'm just going to do it over. And I it's going to be a real challenge to see if I can do as well as I did last time. I, I'll just put that out there right now. I'm going to have to really play well to, uh, to do as well. And I'm also going to do my best to play it as if I didn't know what was coming. Obviously, I do now, I have to admit. But um, anyway, we're going to play Transport Revolution 1830 to 1850. And one difference is I'm going to talk while I play so I don't have the same problems I had. I'll probably have new problems, but at least I won't have the same problems I just had with the last time I did this. So we're going to play Transport Revolution, Great Britain and Ireland, 1830 to 1850. It's considered medium difficulty. That's probably about right. It's, it, it is it's challenging, but it's not overly so. And so let's let's go on here. So we're going to, of course, bump our AI up to very hard, and that's really all the options we have. We don't have much starting money. We'll be in Liverpool, and we'll have three competitors that are very hard, and they will be scattered. Probably, well, one will be in Ireland, no doubt. One will be up in Scotland, and one will be probably, well, we're here, probably down here messing us up or up here. Who knows? We'll see, we'll see when it comes out. I always tell the truth, even when I'm lying. Now here's the other thing, we are have to play with the trickster. Now the trickster is, uh, she was absolutely my favorite character. Uh, I played, if, if given a choice, I would play with the trickster in the old set. In the new set, given the choice, I would play anyone but the trickster. I, I think she has been, and I believe the term is nerfed, she has been nerfed uh, a lot. So she still gets her discount on auctions, which is which is useful. But her research, 70% less innovation points. She practically doesn't have research. She has very, very tiny little research trickling in. And you have to basically use spies to do your research. So the way you get overcome this problem is that you use spies to do the research. Well, spies cost money, and as the game goes along, they cost progressively more money. So again, of course, one of the keys is we have to go really fast and build our economy up so that we can afford these spies to keep our research going. And then we'll hope, uh, of course, the one good thing is uh, some of the uh, technologies will come up for bid and we'll definitely try to win all those bids and get some of our tech uh, done that way. But bottom line is the trickster really doesn't bring a lot to the table now, whereas she used to be just pretty awesome. So. Let's, but let's see how we can do with the trickster. And this is great because we've had, uh, of the characters we've played, uh, all of the, this will be the fourth one, I think, that we've played. We haven't played the engineer yet, and we haven't played the Robert general. Stevenson, pleased to meet you. All right, pleased to meet you, Robert. As you might know, I am known for a certain expertise in building and handling steam locomotives, and I look forward to collaborating with you. All right, so first of all, <laughs> I can never get, never seem to recall how much they like to talk. Yeah, they like to talk as much as I do. All right, so I'm going to talk over our good friend Robert. So we've got a situation here where we are locked into a small geography. Now, that tells us a couple of things in these scenarios. One is, of course, we have to work within this limited space, but you can see... We've got five cities running all the way over here from uh, Wrexham to Liverpool to Manchester to Leeds to Hull. And we have a fair amount of resources here. The one that I don't see available to us is that one right there we'd like to have, which is wheat. Wheat's one of the, in the new uh, setup, wheat's one of the fundamentals. Well, I'm sorry, it's not wheat, forgive me, barley. This is barley, so but we don't have barley on this uh, setup, but that's okay. We can live without it. We'll have to make sure we get the rest of the stuff in there. So looking at this right away, it just cries out for a rapid expansion, you know, to four to five cities. Remember rapid expansion? I'll put a link to the strategy. I'm going to try not to cover 
re, you know, cover again ground that I've already covered. So um, uh, I'll put a link to the rapid expansion strategy. We're going to use kind of a modified rapid expansion strategy, and we've got a natural kind of cider, ham, cider, ham going here. We've got ham to ham here, so we'll pass on this one for now and set up four cities going um, uh, from Liverpool to Manchester to Leeds to Hull. So that's going to be our opening uh, gambit unless the you know requirements tell us to do otherwise, which they won't, of course. So uh, first thing is connect Manchester and Liverpool. All right, so what I'm going to do, the reason I call it a modified rapid expansion is because the first thing is I'm going to use sta train stations rather than small ones. And one reason is because we have our competition blocked out, right? Because you know, the one good thing about when you have this limited area, uh, typically in these scenarios, not only is it, does it mean we can only build in a certain area, it also means that our competitors can't come in and bother us. So we're going to make a connection between Manchester and Liverpool right away, because that's our first objective. So, duh. <laughs> And Liverpool is our capital, so we have to start there anyway. With this railway there we go. That looks we pretty good. Make the there we go. Ta-da! We got one done. Population. But it seems like the public and the investors that could be the easiest task ever created as in a scenario. As soon as we create more successful lines, this will change. So now we have to, to expand and have eight... Um, trains running at an average weekly profit of $4,500, or sorry, I guess it would be pounds. You'll probably hear me say dollars most of the time, but 4,500 pounds uh, per uh, week. Yeah, we're going dollars. Sorry, it's dollars. We're going $4,500 a week, and so we're going to set up our uh, our little uh, junctions at the end of each of those and set our signals. And I'm also going to try to keep my comments primarily to the strategy and tactics and not so much about the game mechanics. Lots of videos out there to help you with game mechanics. If you're struggling with them for whatever reason, uh, you know, let me know. I'm happy to uh, uh, create something or give you answers to questions. Our community, we've got a strong community of good players here. so. Uh, you know, depending upon your question, perhaps somebody else can help you out. We'll see. But um, anyway, let's set up our line between Manchester and Liverpool. And the first thing I notice is, because I know how I want to, uh, the strategy I want to take, I didn't need both supply towers, but I also don't want to delete them because now, whether it's a feature or a bug, when you delete um, uh, a tower, the track underneath it, whoops, gets deleted, and uh, that kind of sucks. So, um, let's see, what, we'll go out of track, whoops, track one here, and we'll go over here to track one, and that's gonna be our Liverpool to Manchester. Run our little rockets. Set one going back the other way. Whoop, track one to track one. And we're only going to run a couple of trains. It's a very short line, and uh, we don't want to tie up the line too much because we're we're going to be probably running. Well, we we will be running other things into that same line. All right, we're going to keep uh, expanding now and go out to Leeds. Have another ham cider run, and I'm just making sure I leave enough room. To expand this station if I need to out that way and there's a river right there now this will go away eventually eventually this will open up we would assume but I want, I want to set this back and I'm also going to set it back this way to give room to get uh, to do our double track and our cross switches and stuff before we get to the river so Lots of rivers on this map, and one of the keys to controlling your expenses is only cross a river once and only cross one river if, if you can. Don't 
don't cross these junctions like uh, where is it over here over here don't don't make the mistake of going like that across where you end up uh, crossing two rivers when you didn't need to so just keep it just keep an eye on it. no big deal but just keep an eye on it so we'll go ahead and set up our line here leads to Manchester And I'm running the uh, kind of this uh, double track with the X at the end kind of thing rather than kind of what you might think of my typical point to point uh, for two reasons. One, I just want to practice doing it this way and get better at it. And uh, well, I guess three reasons. And secondly, it is it does have flexibility because now I can tie something into this line and have a second uh, station already set up for me. I don't have to do a bunch of deletions and and switch changes in order to make that work. So um, that's two. And then number three is one of the things I want to do in this in this little series is discuss how and when to move our little super technology, our um, um, automated signaling stations and automatic automatic uh, or automated signaling warehouses. How do you get those into um, how do you get those to work? How do you get those to, when's, when's the right time to bring them into the mix? And I can tell you the right time is not now. It is not when you first start, unless you have ridiculous amounts of money. And uh, that's not, you're not gonna do that in most scenarios. Plus you're not gonna have ridiculous amounts of money. Uh, the way I like to play even free mode, cause I usually like to limit myself as much as possible in free mode. So, um, you don't want to go yet, but we will talk later about when to bring them in because we definitely want to use them. They are pretty awesome. All right, so let's finish off our rapid expansion here with a station in Hull. And here's a case where I want to make sure I don't do this kind of a crossing and then go back or anything. I want to make sure I just cross Cross the river once. <laughs> Come back here. Oh, well, let's start over. Go like ahead, cross the river once and go into hall. Now we're running these little old uh, rockets. Ah, come on. They, they don't like slopes, but we are early and money is tight. And I would rather have some slope and have this line be a little bit slow than to spend too much money trying to build a big long bridge and, and trying to get this to you know very minimal uh, slope change. So I'd much rather have the slope at this point particularly on this, this particular city to city line. It doesn't have to go, I mean, the faster it goes, the better, of course, but uh, it's not gonna be crucial to us that it, that it just flies at this point. And if we have to, you know, we can add a train if we have to, to uh, get, make the coverage a little bit better. Okay, that gives us our rapid expansion. We've got six trains running, and uh, we've got three city-to-city -city lines going with four cities connected. Good deal. Now, next phase of rapid expansion is to hook up what we used to call the wheat and cattle phase, but now it's going to be the apples and pigs phase, or backfatters. Are they backfatters? Or, yeah. 
what is that thing? A back fatter. Yeah, they call it a back fatter. It's a pig. So we're going to have our pig and apple phase. And this pig line is going to be pretty expensive to run into Liverpool. So I'm going to take the low hanging fruit, pun intended, and run apples into Manchester here first. Run a small station and hook up Manchester with apples. Merge it into our existing line. Now, in, okay, now are we out of money? Or did we already do that? Yeah, we already did that. All right, we need to gather up some money. Um, in the past, I would have probably had um, a tower down here and then tried to merge this in right at the tower. I'm trying to learn not to do that because you actually create uh, potential bottlenecks down the road. So I notice I've got this tower out away from the junction. I've got this one out away from it. And, and I want to make sure when we have a junction like this that we don't have that guy right there. Do you see that uh, tower right there? That's a mistake. Because that tower now, or I'm sorry, signal, that signal right there would actually allow a train to come down here and stop, to wait to go in, and then a train coming out that might be going up this way could get stopped by that train. That's the thing we'll try very hard to avoid. Um, is those kinds of merging mistakes. In fact, I may even make a video on merging again, another one on merging and how to avoid that kind of stuff. But I really, right there, there's the video, I just made it. Uh, keep this clean, keep this area clean so that you can run these trains. So let's set up our apple line. Run full with apples and go into Manchester and all right, we'll pick uh, one. It's not too bad. We could expand at this point, but 50% utilization is not that much. So we'll run a couple of Apple trains into uh, Manchester. And then we'd love to run, love to keep the, the uh, now here's a nice close back fatter, or fat backer. <laughs> Pigs, here's pigs. I'm gonna mess that up forever because I've got it. I've, it's messed up in my mind. I'll never get it right. So we're just gonna say pigs. All right. So see, we can't grab those those pigs right there yet. So uh, the next pigs would be down here, or we could go over here with the um, apples, run them into to Hull, and have a pretty short run. What do we want to do? Well, let's do that. This, by the way, is slightly different from last time. <laughs> That's okay. I don't, have to, I don't have to do exactly the same thing. All right, so we'll run a line like this, and we'll run it out of our hull station like so. See if we can cross the, see, what's that bridge? 54,000. Save about 10 grand by curving it a little more. There we go. All right. In case you are short so 60, you are able to, to give your project a fresh impetus at any time. Admittedly, bonds oh, Robert, I'm already always, past that, buddy. As soon as the ardor has reached the people, the railway will profit. Okay, we need 38 and 36. We need about 70. Yeah, let's call it 100 before we start building out our line. And now, uh, one other thing. Slow down a second here. These employees. I have to tell you, I'm just going to, I'm, uh, I'm not using the automated. I, I just, I'm going to have to be, have, be disciplined and not use it. it honestly, it sucks. It does a, it, it'll put them on trains, you'll get conductors on freight lines, 
And of course, you'll get the conflicts and the patent and the and tr personnel will fight with each other. I would almost rather not have personnel than have them get messed up. So I'm going to try my best to do this manually. And it's also, see, we don't have any rail cars yet. We're in 1830. So let's just see if we can't give them a conductor. And they get along so they can they can go together. So I'm going to try my best to uh, do those manually. Uh, reporters are worthless at this point because we actually don't have any competition. All right, where are we here? Okay, we got our. Yeah, we're still short. We got to build our switch at the end of hall here. Put in our signals. As it and now we need about 60, general, 60 or 70 to get a tower and a train. The railway arouses. Oh, look at this! Right now. Your next there. goal shall be the heart of the United Kingdom, London. I am afraid we have to do a lot of persuading. Many landlords are refusing to sell their land, and thus they are blocking our way to London. All right, so now we need to connect to grow some a couple cities a little bit and connect London and Liverpool. So if we go out here and look, London is way down here to the south, way down here. We're blocked out. So in these scenarios, anytime you have a task you have to do, but it's impossible to do it, that just indicates that something else has, something has to give before you have permission to do what you need to do. So the thing to do is just focus on the task at hand. So what we can do is this, grow a couple cities to 35,000. Well, of course, now we're already set up to do that because we've got a four city cluster and we're gonna do city growth out of that setup. And let's see, where were we? Let's finish off this one we started down here and get this, um, get these apples going into Hall. Make sure I use my Pedro technique and uh, use shift when I set these things up. And I'm, I'm going to send it into track one, even though that one's used, because we may want track two for something down the road. We may not, I don't know. So one and two. I got a stoker I can hire, and an inventor would be uh, inventor would be kind of nice right now. So let's just let this run until we can get that inventor. Okay, so now we've got a little research done, and let's bump up our freight revenue. That's always good. All right. So, where was I? Okay, we've got that line set up. All right, so now let's just talk about how we're gonna do our city growth. Now, at this point, uh, well, we've got two more things, we, well, one more we need to do. Uh, Leeds will get uh, pigs because it's close by over land. So we do need to get this one set up to run uh, the pigs directly into Liverpool. Remember, one of our things for the setup is you run your um, um, cattle directly into your meat or pigs directly into your ham, and you run your wheat directly into your beer or your apples directly into your cider. Um, and we've already got it over here. This one will just let the land route take care of it because it's so close. So our next step will be to, do, to get this going, to the, get these pigs going to Liverpool. And that way we'll keep our uh, ham and cider um, thing going. And then we'll figure out how we want to do our city growth, our next phase of city growth. So we need some money. We're going to need 
Now you can just look at this and see we're going to need 40 here, probably 100 for track. We're going to need 140, or at least $150,000 to even start thinking about this. So, oh, I've got a stoker I need to assign. Reporters are worthless. So let's go to our train list. Uh, Stoker. Where's that? Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. I, this is not, assigning staff is not my favorite thing to do. All right, uh, I'm, I'm going to quit griping about it. Okay, so we're almost got enough money. Our money's already racking up quickly. Now, why is that? Uh, I've covered this many times, but for those of you who are fairly new, because the city city lines are going to run haul passenger freight and mail. We're going to get good profit from them. Our our two little Apple lines are making good profit, and we're we're um, slowly growing the cities. They're they're not quite growing yet. But we're, we're moving goods between them right now. And what we're going to do now is start to, again, stimulate more of that growth. We want to keep that um, beer, or sorry, ham and cider moving. So this is the next step is to get this um, pig line going in here to Liverpool. And again, we want to kind of be careful to cross the rivers once, not two or three times, or not two rivers if you can only cross one. So there's our line, and we that was a hundred, so it's going to cost us another. We need about 150 more to really make this go. So we'll just wait till we have 150. See how we're doing on our debt. We've got 77 weeks left, around 240, 220, 240. So uh, the reason that matters, I'm looking ahead right now. I'm looking ahead to what we want to do next. But you can see everything's moving smoothly. We're making decent money. That train's relatively full. So, but we got to keep that growth going to keep those trains full. Or as close as we can get them. This is a 61-day route. We want it to go down to average under 50. That be that would cover a demand of one a day. That's going to give us two, and we'll give it one to grow on because it's a pretty long line. So we've got three trains running in there. They'll make good money. And now we need to talk about how are we going to get city growth. All right. See, we're getting some breakdown bad condition. We don't have any um, maintenance yet, but it's a little. It's too soon to put the maintenance on frankly. We'll just have to accept that some of these are going to break down. And we're going through a phase of breakdowns. Uh, if, uh, they'll get repaired and move on, so we'll just deal with it. Okay, hire the engineer. Chief engineer, hire research. Perfect. We'll take him for sure. Uh, right now we need money. So <laughs> the professor is a great thing to get. He gives us money. We need money. The others are not useful now. All right, so what we're going to do here, we are now going to go into the warehouse phase. We are going to set up a warehouse, but we're going to use, instead of a two-city pass-through cluster or pass-through deal, we're going to run the three-city pass-through, the single warehouse, kind of the, let's call it the Johnny Hughes design, and we're going to set up um, Liverpool, Manchester, and Leeds as a three-city cluster and put a warehouse somewhere here around uh, 
uh, Manchester. And that's going to cost us some money because we're going to need a couple hundred grand for the warehouse. We're, we're not going Superstation yet, but we'll put, put in the warehouse. And then we need to start running stuff into it. So we need at least uh, three or four hundred, uh, half a million at least, to, just even to get a basic start. So what we're going to do here, because we need that much money, and we're starting to get a little money, we're going to pay off both of our bonds. So there goes one of them. And we're going to wait until we accumulate enough money to pay off that one, and then we'll open up two bigger bonds. Our company value should be increasing because we're making more cash all this time. We should be able to get two nice big bonds out of it, and um, then, then we'll be able to um, do something. Now, okay, the spies we want because that's our, that's our research. The spies are our research. So let's see, I need to assign a couple of trains. Uh, let's keep building up this one here. All right, let's see if we can put an engineer on this one. Nope, bad choice. Next train, okay, you go there. So we got the bell, that's good. We actually got some research out of that deal. And again, we're waiting on 250, 260, and look at this, another professor. We'll hire that conductor and, ah, uh, shucks. Now here's the trade-off with, again, Trisha doesn't get any research, so we can't even get that professor, so, oh well, bye-bye. I really want the money now more than the research. The spy was relatively cheap, so I didn't mind spending money on the spy. So now I've got a bunch of people I need to get staffed. This is going to be a pain the whole game. I can see it. Okay, let's see. Do you get along? Do you get along? Yep. Okay. I don't have any unassigned, so... Oh, I can't tell if I have unassigned people. This is killing me. Okay, two con I got two conductors to assign to, to trains. Okay. I'm sorry, sorry. I'm, I, I I don't think I'm smart enough to, to use this. Okay, conductor. The way they've done it now, you can't tell if the people are unassigned or not. It drives me nuts. Okay. Oh, would love to have an analyst right now, except that we don't have any competition we're allowed to do anything with, so... Oh, wait a minute, could we, could we, are we allowed to, are we allowed to mess with these guys? No, we can't buy any stock, so the analyst is worthless. All right, now we've, now we've accumulated some money while I was off assigning people. Slow down. Uh, what are we going to do with it? Uh, we're going to pay off this bond. Now we're going to open two larger bonds. 367 and 395. Now we've got some money to build ourselves a warehouse. All right. Now at this point, we could even think super warehouse with that much money. 900. Yeah, why not? Shoot. I was going to go just a normal warehouse here, but we got 900 grand and yeah, we're just going to go super. <laughs> All right. A warehouse with signaling controls. Now, where do we want to put this, this big old beast? What I'd like to do, uh-oh, maybe the super won't work. <sighs> that runs straight into that. Oh, come on. I would love to pick up, mm, that salt is really kind of worthless. That's a late, late game deal. I'd love to pick up that, those logs, even though they're not needed. Oh, here we go. No. Man. Oh, come on. 
Oh, man. I, I know for a fact, because I've done it, I can take a regular warehouse and fit it in there. So I can fit that in there and then make that curve and everything's cool. Uh, man, I want to pick up a good and I want to, I want to have my cake and eat it too here, by golly. I want what I want. But that river right there is keeping me from putting the super warehouse in here. So you know what? I'm just going, that's okay. I'm just going to put in a warehouse. Or, well, I'm going to put in the super warehouse. We're going to stick with that. And we'll just forego the logs for now. Maybe we won't even run logs in there. So what will we run? We will run oh, wheat eventually. Definitely um, fish and apples. Probably potatoes. And we'll probably run logs too. Maybe milk. Who knows? Let's see what it will let us do first. And I do wish they would allow you to just pick what you wanted right off the bat. Um, fish, we said. Apples, for sure. Possibly those when they, if they'll let us. All right, so now we have a warehouse. So let's start running stuff into it. Now, what we want to do, eventually, we'll, we'll, we'll put in, we'll expand this station, because it'll be on this side, and run two track out from Liverpool to go, run track out of Liverpool through the warehouse to Leeds and over here in Leeds we will add a station over here back to back to be the other side of our pass through but we don't want to build the pass through first we want to just load goods into this warehouse and Manchester will consume them we'll make money from them and we'll start loading up the warehouse then when the warehouse is nice and uh, uh, let's say full, then we can think about um, running our, our pass-through portion of it and start to feed Leeds and Liverpool. So, ooh, fish and apples. Uh, now the apples we could run, obviously the shorter line would be this way, but then we've got a bridge. So, and we know we're going to eventually run the potatoes, so let's just run our apples from down here. And we'll use a second small station rather than expanding the first, because it's cheaper. There we go. And we'll figure out how we want to run a line down here to connect into this. And I think, given that tight curve and the fact that we want to run off the leads, I think we want to go around, take a slightly longer route like this. don't want that bridge. Okay. So we want this bridge to be as short as we can get it. Early on you have to watch your cost so much. It's kind of ironic. Um, early on when you've got the little trains that can't handle the slopes you need to build a lot of snow slopes because you can't afford bridges and tunnels later on when you got better trains and you can handle the slopes you can afford to build track with more bridges and tunnels with a lot less slope less slope so <laughs> you can't win all right so all right so we'll set up our line for uh, apples into our warehouse. And, and what I've been doing with these warehouses is setting them up so that they, to start with, that they hold 20, kind of the default. And then I'll run three trains in there. So 16 will fill it up, and the third one will be partially loaded and ready to go. And what will typically happen, and once you get going and your cities are really using using this stuff, uh, your, um, 
Wait a minute. Did I? Sorry. I, I'm. I like. Oh, see. No, no. Here we go. I like to tie these off, even though I don't think it's strictly necessary. I think uh, the truth of the matter is that um, when a train's coming in like this, once it gets to the, the junction, it can go to any of the platforms. And when it comes out, uh, well, it would have to take a platform. It could use this one. But I just like to tie it off like that. It just looks nice. I, don't, I really don't think that's necessary. But maybe one of you is way smarter than me can help me, help me figure out if I really need to do that or not. So there we've got our line going. I didn't put anything on it, did I? Here we go. That's one. Now see, that says there's a stoker there. But if I look, oh, there is one. <laughs> I'll put him on a different line. One, two, three. Okay, so we got our trains running in for apples. And I want to put that stoker somewhere. And what else have I got? All right, I'll hire this guy. Another, oh man, another analyst. Thanks so much. They're, just, they're teasing me now. Because the, the, the analysts are not worth anything. They're teasing me. There's no doubt about it. All right. So, apples, uh, fish, fish, fish. Now, here we want to be careful. Um, we've got this these hills in here. And we want to go around those hills with these little, little uh, rockets for sure. So, we want to come down kind of like this. And what we'll have to do, because the, it's over here, we're going to have to pass over this somehow. But then kind of mer we can merge back into it because it's going to become our line for the um, uh, Liverpool to warehouse. So how do we want to do this? Let's just see what we get here. If we go in... Scoot it over a little bit like so. Now that warehouse, that close to the bridge, is very clumsy. So let's get rid of that. Uh, I groaned because I knew what was coming. It, it now deletes the track underneath. And you would think, well, that's okay. You'll just hook it back up. Not always. Sometimes you can and sometimes you can't. Well, this time, thank goodness... We can. All right. So no harm done. <laughs> and that train just zapped off out of the way. Don't know where he went. Look, there he is right there. Let's see, let's see what happens to him. Okay. <laughs> that was a cool looking train. All right. I'd hate to be a passenger on that one. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to run our line like so. Oh, look at that. Uh, you know, I saw I saw that little bridge there and thought, ah, I hate that little bridge. But uh, have I mentioned lately how much I hate bridges? Okay, we'll go across. Okay, we know we're going to expand this. We know we're going to run a line. So I'm going to stub this out. I hate doing this. But we're going to stub out track. that because well actually in fact we could go further with this oh I love bridges I just love bridges oh, that wasn't so bad let's see if we can get around this one without too much damage like so yeah let's just go ahead and run this puppy into like so. So that will eventually be our line coming out of um, Liverpool to the warehouse. And we can double track it like so. And while we're thinking of it, we can tie it off up here at the end, make it all nice and neat. Okay. 
Okay, so there we go. Now we have to cross that line to get our fish in and merge back with it. So what's the best way for us to merge into that line? It looks to me like the best way is going to be to cross over, build yet another bridge, and then merge with it over here, like so. sucks okay that sucks interesting okay plan B conquer these things one at a time like so oh that's much better cheaper and more direct route too now what we can do here since we're only crossing one track is use a flat connection that way we won't have a giant slope there for our little rocket to to deal with all right that's better 111,000 versus 250 some thousand and it's a straighter shot so we'll need about well, we need about 250 to uh, make it fly, though, so let's wait a minute. These little trains are struggling to handle that, so let's see if we can help them out. Yeah, that's not much help. First track. Let's see if we scoop this back a little bit. See if we can straighten this out a little bit. Okay. 
Okay, fourth degree right there seems to be the best we can do. All right. And I don't know if I said this already, um, but um, the reason we want to do the warehouse is because we don't want to have to keep building more and more rural stations to deliver the same product to each of the different cities. That's where the warehouse is really useful. The warehouse allows you to set up one rural station that's loading into one warehouse that serves multiple cities. And it won't let me go there, and I know... No, I don't know. Why won't it let me go there? I don't know. Let's go ahead and say, run this way, run that way. Let's see if our line will work now. No, why not? There's something wrong. Ah, oh, it's not connected. See that right there? You can tell because this one is a is not moving. It's a both directions, and this is one direction. So there's a we're going to disconnect right there. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I, I can see it. So we're going to have to get rid of some track and rebuild it like so. think that worked. Yeah, there we go. That's, uh, that's actually a, a it's got to be a, a, a defect or a shortcoming of this uh, crossover track kind of thing where you're doing the flat crossovers. Um, sometimes you will get that little disconnection. But once we fix that now we should be able to run our fish line. And got us some staff. Oh, goodness. Inventor, inventor, mediator. We got a little money. Let's let's grab these inventors and see if we can't tech up a little bit here. Yeah, we can get the John Bull. Now our next goal after we get this thing going is to replace our trains. Half a million dollars. We would like to start running the John Bull everywhere. It's, it's going it, to, it just kind of almost doubles your throughput on these things. So, uh, da, da, da. all right, again, I will set up this line. <laughs> All right, so this has gotten a little longer than a minute to be, so let's stop right here, and we'll pick up uh, part two. We'll just jump right in where we are at this point, and we'll carry on from there. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it'll help you become a better player, and I hope you'll join us for our next Railway Empire video. Thank you.